My brother seen me doing this one time. He asked me, are you gonna shovel the whole yard? It really helps when you have a path to the shed because the buckets of water that you're carrying will just push snow and it's like you're plowing snow the entire way to the rabbitry. That's why I always try to keep my path shoveled and the rabbitry clear. It just makes working and watering and feeding a lot easier. Sounds like somebody lost their dog. I can hear him yelling. I don't know if this guy's, he is way off path. He's like walking through the swamp right now. Can't really make him out. Watch, it's Bigfoot. No, I'm not a Bigfoot believer. I do enjoy a Bigfoot story though. I am so distracted right now. I'm gonna try to do this video. So the snow is back with a vengeance in January, February. We get a lot of snow here in Michigan and the storms really hold on. You know, the early snowstorms, it all melts away, everything gets cleaned up. But after Christmas, that's when we get hit pretty hard and it just doesn't go away. So today it's about 25 degrees. Uh, rabbits are doing great. We're out here doing chores, getting some firewood, moving some rabbits around. And it's really important that you have your rabbitry hutch wrapped in plastic, at least on the bottom half. And the winds are pretty brutal and you wanna make sure that your rabbits have that plastic wrap. Now, airflow is really beneficial too. You don't wanna wrap your entire cage in plastic or anything, but when you have that plastic up, the rays will come through that plastic. You'll get the greenhouse effect. That, that warmth will radiate up through the cage. It really helps. Rabbits do really well out in the cold, but when they're getting pounded with that wind regularly, that's when they can be vulnerable to the elements. So you wanna make sure you get your plastic up. Now there's lots of different kinds of plastic, so you wanna make sure you purchase the thicker plastic. And what we did was we just cut it in three different sections, about three foot sections, and uh, just used a stapler with some quarter inch, I think it's 5 16ths, Staples. Okay. Every few feet. So our entire rabbitry is wrapped in plastic now and I wanted to talk about the level of plastic that you purchase makes a big difference. Now the first plastic we put up is compared to a grocery store plastic bag. The second plastic that we put up was a lot tougher. It's the plastic we use on our greenhouse. So we've already used this and it's been weathered. It's been sitting out for months and that's some really tough stuff. It's gonna cost twice as much, but you're gonna get, it's gonna go a lot farther. So be sure to take that into consideration when you're buying your plastic. Make sure you get the really thick, tough, tough plastic that's probably more towards $10 to $12 for a sheet of 10 foot by 20. Rachel makes this amazing rabbit stew. Stay tuned for that. So today I'm inside with the whiteboard. I just had arm surgery yesterday, so I'm a little wiped out, but I'm gonna to try to get through this video. Today I wanted to talk about the rabbit's digestion and how they use the cecum to break down fiber. A horse also has this, a, a rhino has this, but today we're gonna to talk about cecotropes. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So if you're interested in that, stick with us. So we're gonna get out on the whiteboard. We'll show you the digestion, and rabbit's digestion is a little different from say like a cow or a deer. Um, those are ruminants and that's uh, a different kind of stomach, the rumen. So animals like sheep, goats, deer, cows, they all have a rumen stomach digestive system. And this is a separate chambered stomach that helps them digest large amounts of grass. So a rabbit's diet is about 80% hay. A horse eats a lot of hay every day too and they eat about 2% of their body weight which a mature horse is going to be around a thousand pounds so that's about 20 pounds of hay a day. 
So a hindgut fermenter is a single chambered stomach that uses bacteria, yeast, and other microorganisms to break their food down. We bring up the other system, the, the rumen, because it's very much like the rumen, but instead of the cecum being at the beginning of the digestive system, it's at the end. So a rabbit's digestive system is specifically designed for a high fiber diet. The cecum has all sorts of microbes that help break down fibers and all sorts of feeds that a rabbit may eat. So starting with a rabbit's stomach, it enters the small intestine, it encounters enzymes, it, which aids in digestion. It'll start to absorb proteins and nutrients and sugars and starches. So leaving the small intestine into the cecum, this is where the magic happens. Using the volatile fatty acids, the microbial breakdown begins. The cecum has a cecal epithelium which is located in the mucosa and this is a, a membrane liner that is located in the lumen and this helps absorb nutrients through the digestive tract. So here's the kicker. Rabbits can't digest or extract all their nutrients the first time around. So that's why they make cecotropes. If you're not familiar with what cecotropes are, that's the the slimy, shiny, stinky, uh, one of the two kinds of fecal matter that rabbits create. Now, a lot of times you won't see this. Sometimes a nursing doe will have them in the nesting box for the kits, the newborns to nibble on because they're packed with amino acids, minerals, vitamins, and they're, they're really good for the rabbit. In most cases, they, they eat them directly from the anus in the middle of the night. They're called nighttime feces, midnight berries, uh, you know, different names, but but they re-ingest them to have all the vitamins and minerals they can possibly get. And I know it makes you just think, ew. I give my rabbits fruits and vegetables, but it's not even close to being half of their diet. I really stick to pellet and hay and fresh water and greens uh, when it comes to older rabbits. In spring, summer, and fall is when I'm feeding most of my greens. So what kind of food will give your rabbits gas? Now remember, a rabbit can't burp, so it only can come out one way. But feeding a lot of iceberg lettuce, carrots, kale, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, this stuff will all cause your rabbit to have gas if you give a lot of it. Now a little bit, like a quarter cup, you know, that's a good idea. But whenever you're feeding it, you know, just copious amounts. So we talked about how the rabbit's stomach is designed for a high fiber diet, but not so much for carbs and sugars. So this is the kind of stuff, big meals of carbs and sugars will cause a rabbit to have diarrhea. So I want folks to know that I do feed my rabbits treats, but I feed them uh, sparingly. And I'm always trying to make sure that the rabbits have a healthy hay uh, for good fiber intake to keep the right amount of bacteria or all the microbes in the stomach working correctly. And you can use timothy, orchard, uh, oat, alfalfa, meadow. I mean, all that hay is good. It's just important to provide fiber. And you can feed a lot of fiber.